Holding the rod is fairly straightforward. You rest the rod near the bottom of the cork in your four fingers. And then you simply place your thumb on top of the rod or along the back ridge of the rod to secure it in place. You want to keep a loose grip, not a tight grip, because you're going to be casting all day and you don't want your hand to get tired. And also because keeping a loose grip helps you develop a loose fluid cast. When you're working on constructing the perfect fly cast, there are three principles that you always want to return to. Pace, pause, and 10 and 2. Pace refers to the speed at which the rod travels through the air. You want it to be the same speed going forward as going back. You want consistency in your cast. Pause refers to the pause at the front of the cast and the pause at the back of the cast. Always a small pause at least at each end of the cast which allows the fly and the line to complete their path through the air before the next casting motion. 10 and 2 refers to the angle of the rod. You never want the rod to dip below 2 o'clock on the back or 10 o'clock on the forward cast because that will cause the fly and the line to hit the ground and therefore to tangle eventually. Through a good long day of fishing you're going to cast from a lot of different positions but the basic standing casting position should be one of comfort. With your feet shoulder width apart roughly and I like to cast with my left foot slightly in front of my right because I'm right handed and also with my body and, and my feet facing towards the spot I'm casting. The foot forward pointing towards the spot I'm casting to creates a, a position where I can rotate on my hips a little bit and create a very solid broad range of motion in my cast towards the target. Every person develops mechanics of a fly cast that are comfortable to them. However, there are a few basic principles. Fly cast mechanics sometimes are more memorable for what they're not because we are accustomed to throwing balls with our hands, throwing baseballs, softballs, basketballs. But the fly cast is nothing like a ball toss. A ball toss is a full circle revolution of the hand all the way down usually to a parallel position with the ground. It's a circular motion, but a fly cast is much more a lateral motion where the, hand, the casting hand travels along a plane and doesn't deviate very much from that plane, which helps the line at the end of the rod also travel along a plane and deviate very little from the plane. So I like to be fairly loose in my cast. In my cast, my, bot, my shoulders and my torso rotate on my hips a little bit. They definitely use my shoulder a little bit. There's a lot of elbow involved because the arm is extending and retracting constantly. And then the wrist of all the joints probably stays the stiffest because the more the wrist is rotating, you can see I can go virtually 180 degrees with my wrist. And so a loose wrist will basically cause the line and the fly to hit the ground and tangle. In a good fly cast, it's actually the rod that throws the line out or flings it out rather than your arm and your hand. And so I think it's a good idea to practice without the line in your rod to start. You put the reel on but without stringing out the line. And that will enable you to feel in an uninhibited way without worrying about the line what kind of bend you can put in the rod with your forward and back 10 and 2 cast. It's the bend in the rod that's going to sling the line out and the line with it, the fly. And so what you want to feel is the weight of the rod bending in the air as you cast forward and back with pace and timing and 10 and 2. If you can feel that bend in the rod and the weight it creates in your arm then and grow comfortable with it, then you won't be shy in your cast. You'll, be, you'll have the appropriate level of aggressiveness and you'll cast with precision and purpose. Okay, so as you can see I've got about, uh, about about eight feet probably all right and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on the feeling all right of the rod. Now you'll notice I'm holding the line with my right hand right here so that I don't end up pulling any line off all right and I'm just gonna work on that pause with the line. It's gonna feel a little tiny bit different and I want you to watch your rod tip all right I want you to take a look 
and I want you to watch as it goes back and forward. You're throwing a loop, and I want you to think about throwing that loop, okay? Now, less is more, okay? I can make a fairly tight loop, all right, without a whole lot of effort. If I just think about a, a bit of a snap and a pause, okay? Just nice, easy motion, okay? So that's what you do when you've got about eight feet of line out. You're thinking about building that timing and making that loop, okay? The left hand is, is very quiet. It doesn't do a whole lot, but the timing of when you use your left hand is crucial. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is that the, the left hand is used to strip the line off the reel so that you can add distance to your line. That's how you get further out there, okay? You strip the line off your reel, okay, with your left. Now, you hold your left hand right in the holster. This is generally position A, okay? All right, when you strip the line, you hold it low. You don't hold it out here somewhere. You're not off here. You're right down here, okay? Now, I take the rod back, okay? And as I take the rod back, you'll see I'm still in the holster. I'm still in the spot. And as I bring the rod forward, what you'll notice is that as soon as that forward motion is made, I will follow with my left hand and the line will flow through all right, my OK sign with my left hand right here and then I'll pinch it again. Once I've met all right, this beautiful marriage right here okay, between your hands. So right here, take it back, forward, okay. Now what you want to watch out for of course is this. Where you, where you let go and then start your forward motion because then you're slowing, throwing a slack line. Very, very, very important to remember that you're throwing a loop and the loop has to be thrown before you can make it go longer, okay? Um, the roll of the left hand, remember, you keep, your, you keep your left hand around the line at all times. Okay, so we're at the water's edge, okay, and I just want to uh, illustrate that I'm taking, peeling one Oh, body length here, body width of line off the reel, and uh, I'm just going to take it back slowly here, all right, and once I'm out of the water, I'm creating a very small loop, and as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast two times, all right, and then let some line out. I'm just going to false cast, and then let some line out. False cast. This gives you a chance to practice. I'm trying to create a nice tight loop. I try to be free with my head so that I can follow my loop, okay? All right, and as you can see, I'm pausing. This is very gentle. There is nothing to this, okay? And as I pick it up straight, I make sure that I'm really only doing 10 and 2, okay? And I'm focused on a nice, gentle stroke. I'm going to let a little more line out, and I'm just throwing my loop, okay? And when I'm finally ready to make my final cast, I follow it with my left hand, okay, and that's a nice first cast. So utilizing that pace, pause, and 10 and 2, once you've begun to practice your fly cast, you'll note that there is quite a lot of pause, far more than you might consider before starting in the opposite direction. But as you can see, I've got quite a bit of line out, and I'm letting the line do the work. Remember, if you're moving your, your wrist and your arm uh, very gently, you're still going to get the end of your rod to move quite a bit more. So uh, let the rod do the work for you. Pace, pause, 10 and 2, the quiet left hand. All right. And really, um, just remember that the line is unfurling completely before you start casting in the other direction. And uh, you just.